If you're just starting out with rigid bodies, you'll notice that there are a ton of options, uh, but actually doing rigid body simulations in Maya is one of the easiest things you can do. So I'm going to go over what the options are really quickly. So these are the <clears throat> spheres, which I'm going to be making dynamic, and you can make them dynamic objects and then apply gravity to them, but you can also just skip that step and just apply a field, a gravity field, or any type of field to them directly. You apply a field to any object in Maya, it will automatically turn it into a dynamic object. So we'll go ahead and make this uh, add a gravity. So let's take a look at our options here. Uh, you want to make sure that minus one in the Y, if in fact you do want the gravity to be, to be pointing downwards. And uh, max distance, <clears throat> this is if you want your gravity to be limited to a certain range. We don't, we want it to be affecting everything in the scene. Volume shape, you can have your, uh, your gravity, like any other field, take on like a spherical, a spherical volume or a cube, uh, but we don't want to do that either, so let's just go ahead and apply. All right, so what that's done, created this little almost imperceivable object, which is our gravity field, and now, if we rewind and hit play, and just so you know, you want to make sure when you're doing sims that your playback speed is at play every frame. If we hit play, our balls will just fall through the floor. So the next thing we have to do is make this a collision object. What Maya calls collision objects is passive rigid bodies. And that's basically a same thing as a rigid body, except it will not move. So click that and it's become a passive rigid body. You know your objects have become dynamic because your channels will turn yellow. Now if we hit play, we have collisions. So just quickly going to show you what the options are for your different rigids. If we open up uh, the rigid node in our channel box here, we can see we got a bunch of stuff and it's all pretty much self-explanatory, but just to gloss over it, I'll, I'll show you. I'm grabbing the first one. Initial velocity, how fast do you want it to be moving at the start of the simulation? Let's set this one to 10. So this guy should be moving up at the beginning of the simulation. Uh, this guy here, these are the ones that are pretty much the same thing. How much do you want it to spin? Let's have this guy spin, uh, say, 200 on the Y. We'll see the difference that makes. And this guy here, let's say let's uh let's give it a higher mass change this from 1 to 50 and this guy here will change its bounciness to 0 0.95 the rest we have damping that will soften your animation static friction dynamic friction those things will make your objects slow down when they encounter other objects Collision layer, we'll talk about that later. Ah, standing can be useful if you want to speed up your simulation. If you're working with just cubes and spheres, you can say, all right, we're not going to have collisions at a polygon level. We're going to have collisions at like a mathematical, uh, spherical level. This will speed up your sim. So we'll change this one to sphere. And active on off, that just, you know, if you want to exclude or include objects from the sim, you can just turn them off here. These ones, don't worry about them right now. We'll talk about those later. So now we've changed the initial velocity of this one. We've changed the initial spin of this one. We've changed the bounciness of this one. And we've changed the uh, collision type to uh, sphere, the stand-in type to sphere of this one. So let's rewind and see how it plays out. So simple stuff. The spinning one spins. This one shoots up into the air. And this one acts a little differently. One more cool thing I'm going to show you about working uh, with dynamics is if you go up here under solvers, you've got this guy here called interactive playback. And what that lets you do is lets you move your objects around as you're simulating, which can be useful if it doesn't just screw right up. 